And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Starborn Connection radio show. Uh, I want to welcome everyone across the U.S., around the planet Earth, throughout the solar system here, and our galaxy, the universe. I know some of you guys listening out there may not hear this show for a few million years, but when you do, it'll be fresh. Uh, Good to have you with us. Tonight we are just featuring uh, myself and uh, Julia. We have some stuff we need to talk about. I have an extensive amount of information about uh, Ilona and Ivana Podraska and their alien contactee, Oli. And uh, Julia has some amazing revelations that she's going to talk about. We're going to get to them uh, in a few minutes. Right now, I I really want to... Take a few minutes to tell you what's coming up in the future. I have a couple of really good people lined up for the show. Next week, we're going to be talking to Jane Donovan, and she is a musician who has retired, uh, and uh, she does social work now. She and her partner, Nick Curto, have written a book called The Interdimensional Contact Sessions. Uh, She has contacted uh, entities throughout our solar system, and uh, she has a lot of other things that she wants to talk about. About. Uh, the other thing is here, uh, I have Julia Sellers coming on the week after next, and she does a lot of the translation for the uh, Podraska sisters in the Czech Republic, so she'll be a, a fascinating guest. Uh, I guess two weeks ahead of time is good enough for now, but there is a lot of good stuff scheduled. Um, My producer wants to say a few things about uh, our good, good friend, Mark D'Antonio. Hey, Bill, why don't you take over for a sec? Good evening to you and Julia. I hope you're having a pleasant evening. Uh, So far, so good. Yes. Awesome. um, (laughs) Yes. Uh, What's going on is Mark was on your show, I'd say, about a month ago. Yep. And in that show, he discussed uh, the observatory that he was building in his front yard, and he's doing live streaming. So uh, Mark is doing more of a deep space observation uh, with his observatory than who I believe are the best uh, streamers for the moon and planetary bodies like Saturn and Jupiter, P&K Space Imaging, and also on YouTube, and myself, uh, Bill NY Skywatcher on YouTube, we have come together and we formed the website where you can see all the streams live. There's also a chat room there, and we're building it as we speak, but it's pretty much set up. So if you go to astroimaginglive.com, you'll see the three uh, YouTube pages from each of our streams. And you'll, like I said, you'll see a chat room and some uh, a gallery with uh, photos, and there's a whole bunch of information there. And we're continually to build it, so I just want to let everybody know an update about what's going on with Mark D'Antonio, uh, the P&K the PNK Space Imaging guys, and myself. So hopefully if people will go check it out, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's going to be something that I think is going to be great because it's going to give you a different uh, perspective of deep space, the moon, planetary, and what I do with the wide view of the overall sky. So I hope that uh, people will enjoy it. So, yes. What a service, man. I'll tell you. I am very impressed with Mark, and, and I'm impressed with you, Bill. You're doing so much. I mean, you, you're the only guy, uh, basically, that's producing shows right now, right? Uh, yeah, right now. Yeah. Just to give the folks a little update about that, KGRA is redoing yes. their studio in uh, Arkansas, where Race is located. And um, after it's all completed, the shows will be able to take calls. They're mm. going to totally do a major upgrade as far as sound quality and... Um, also, we have KGRA TV coming in the fall. So a lot of great things coming. Um, we have great shows like yourselves and others on the network and more to come. So they're always looking to improve. So it's going to be a great thing for KGRA in the coming days, months, and years to come. 
I guess it's appropriate to say we're number one. Yes, <laughs> it's awesome. That is really incredible. Absolutely. Well, anyway, let me, let me get started with this. I, I really want to get through uh, Ilona and Ivana's uh, information here because I know Julia has a lot to talk about. I don't want to, you know, uh, take no, all no, the time. You, you, you take your time. Go okay. So they I will, understand. Okay. Okay. No yeah. problem. Listen, uh, I, what I what I want to talk about. I have some new information, and and if you could see my head right now, you'd see that it's covered with bruises because. I've been hitting my head on the desk trying to figure out how to get this stuff together. It's a lot of information. I have a lot of new names that I want to introduce you guys to this week. Um, it's it's becoming something uh, a little bit bigger than I had thought it would be. But, uh, you know, listen in, and, and I'm just going to uh, update you. You'll hear some older stuff mixed in with some newer stuff. Hang in there. It's going to be good. Well, uh, all right, let's st- let's start by saying, you know, uh, with Ilona and Ivana, it- it's easy to simply dismiss two young ladies, sisters in blood, from the Czech Republic. When you hear their story and read the communication they have between uh, this alien called Oli and themselves, you wonder what this is all about. Uh, how can Ivana, the messenger, contact an alien entity through spiritism, and how can Ilona translate? All of this material, massive amounts, without questioning the veracity of the information being disseminated as a result of this contact with the extra uh, um, uh, EBE, Oli. For sure, some of the information and future predictions, as well as some of the historical accounts from Oli, are difficult to picture and to understand. And indeed, some of the information might not be accurate as it could be due to the various levels of translation. So I, I want you to consider uh, this. The, the levels of there's basically three levels of translation that I see here. Uh, the first one uh, is that the extraterrestrial biological entity Oli must put together the dialogue which is understandable by Ivana so there we have the first translation from Oli's language to an understandable discourse to communicate with uh, and then Ivana receives the information and I'm assuming she receives it in Czech then Ilona in turn translates the information from Czech to English there might even be another person in there like Julia Sellers who, who does some of the interpretation as well. Now, that's the second one. Once I or another researcher receives the English translation, it must be interpreted then and written out so you, the listener, can gather the info and make efforts to try and understand the message. So that's the three levels. So an inaccurate word or sentence is understandable, and I will, I'll let you know if there's difficulty uh, basically putting things together to, to make sense. I think eventually it will. Um, now, I've spoken to people about it, and, and some people just snicker and say, oh, what is this stuff? It's nonsense. Uh, and more, more people say that than say, wow, this is pretty awesome. Um, and, and some take it very seriously, and it causes them to think and imagine the possibilities that might exist as, re- as a result of you know, all this info. The bottom line is that one can uh, laugh it off, <clears throat> for lack of a better way to look at it, and not entertain further assessment if they choose. However, there are certain things that happen which make it very, very difficult to dismiss this stuff. For example, and you've, I've told you this before, but we have a lot more detail. Not too long ago, Ilona, Ivana, and their father were driving their car home to Telk their hometown in uh, the Czech Republic. And that ride takes them through some sick, thick forest. As they were driving, they felt the impact of something hitting their car, and it burst into flames, reducing their car to ashes and a metal frame. And believe me when I say ashes and a metal flame, frame, that, that is what it was. Fortunately, the three were able to exit the car, run to a safe distance away from the fire. Now, the local police report, we haven't heard this before, the local police report states that it might have been something under the hood, part of the car that failed and exploded, and it was likely a technical fault. Uh, 
I, you know, that doesn't jibe at all with the experience that the three went through when it happened. They saw a flash from within the forested area, followed by a thump and then an explosion and fire. The car sat on the side of the road, hardly recognizable as a car. Um, and that certainly makes it hard to dismiss, especially when several days later, and this is also very new information, uh, several days later, she received, uh, uh, Ilona received an anonymous, untraceable SMS text. And believe me, she tried to find out where it came from. She received it on her mobile phone, and this is what the message said. What happened to your car was a warning. Keep silent. So somebody means business. Now, here is some old info with some of the new data I received. Um, Oli, the alien, disciplined the two sisters, telling them they had to be very careful and that there was evil out there with bad intentions. I think I think they're aware of that. Um, you there, everybody? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. I, I didn't hear anything. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really intense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, and so uh, Oli disciplined the two and telling them they had to be careful. There was evil out there that was <laughs> out for them. They were told they had to protect themselves because the telepathic link Oli has with Ivana provides uh, – how can I say it? It, it? He connects with Ivana – and that provides the navigation. That's kind of like uh, when he connects with her, that's kind of like a connection point. So that I guess they work with triangulation where they are. Um, and uh, if, if they lose that, then they're not really sure where they're at or who they're talking to down here. Um, they were instructed to challenge people who are strangers around them. And among them, because... The, there are people around them who are not friends. For example, Oli told the sisters that the person who was responsible for their car being destroyed and their lives being threatened was someone whom they are in touch with and whom they have talked to. The person works within, quote unquote, government structures. That's as far as Oli could go. Uh, they were warned that Oli and his fellows can do nothing to prevent more attempts to silence them, but that they must not worry because they will not be hurt or killed. Uh, they are protected because Oli told them their work was not over. There was another important job for them to do. What that is, I don't know, but maybe we'll find out. They were also warned that they are being watched by others, both terrestrial and non-terrestrial. They are being watched so closely that, for example, the person who perpetrated the car accident even knows the content of the hard drive on Ilona's computer. Believe that. Wow. Michael. How wonderful, right? I got a question for you, though. Sure. Could it be that someone obviously hacked into her systems trying to gain information and they're using intimidation to try to quiet her because is she really public? Is she is this something that she really puts out there in Czechoslovakia? Yes, and and it's starting to spread. There there are people in the United States that are also uh, collecting this data, in, interfacing with her, and uh, I, I I have some researchers. I'm going to talk about them in a little while. But okay. yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's something that that she's talking about openly, and somehow someone doesn't want her to say much. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's see. Now, now, um, Oli knows who the person was, but but he can't reveal it to them because of the imminent danger that would, uh, you know, they would be put in by harboring that info. Uh, believe it or not, their home is bugged. They are watched almost constantly. Oli told them that the information given to them must be assessed as to what info would be dangerous to release. In other words, try and figure out what you can talk about with others and what you can't because the wrong stuff could get you killed. And, and if, uh, 
if they have to disconnect the channel, this is another thing that could happen. Oli might have to cut the channel, turn off the channel that they communicate on. And if that should happen, th- that Elon and Ivana lose protection as well. They're, right now they're, they're being highly protected. Some new information. Uh, Oli talks about uh, what we might call Manchurian candidates. They're, they call them robot people or people who are programmed to do the bidding of their controllers. He told the girls that as some people are evil and controlled by a, a higher power, and I'm assuming that Oli is referring to a higher ranking minion in the powers that be. Um, I can't imagine a, a higher power, you know. <laughs> yeah. Doing that stuff. Uh, And when these individuals are activated or remotely controlled, they can kill with the disposition of a robot emotionless. He also tells them about Area 51. Area 51, they are quite aware of Ilona and Ivana, and tabs are being kept on them. He adds that the scientists at Area 51, both terrestrial and extraterrestrial, are working on robots, uh, and I'll get into that later, more like clones uh, than robots, and they are evolving to the point of being able to serve mankind or take their place in the future. Now, that's kind of creepy. It is. Michael, another thing, too, this also sounds like it has a bit of an eerie correlation with the Mount Talk project because we also heard there yeah. they were programming children and also there was the extraterrestrial aspect of it also. This is sign- sounding similarly, eerie, you know, it's eerie that it's sounding a lot like what's, what, what they supposedly happened in the Mount Talk uh, project. Amazing. It really is amazing. Now, uh, a researcher, his name is Peter Anthony Flynn, uh, listened to the show when I originally talked about uh, the um, the car bombing, and he he says, "quote I heard Michael Melton on KGRA read your translated report regarding the car burning incident." Yes, he says, Oli is talking about trained covert ops men of the secret government who are probably trying to destroy your relationship with Oli by destroying you. But also, as Oli said, you are being protected. You're really being shielded as in a force field from these hidden ops soldier. Oli is obviously a threat to them, and perhaps your mission, which he is saving you for, is even greater, uh, even a greater threat to the secret government, which, by the way, is being controlled by bad guy ETs as well <laughs> as bad powers that be. Um, the secret government was long ago infiltrated by bad guy aliens, and uh, they do not want to have their presence exposed to surface humans nor any of the tech that they are hoarding, such as free energy generators. I would like them to be free and out there. Uh, Basically the same as what Tesla was talking about. Uh, And also Starship Propulsion. Uh, You know, I forget who it was, but somebody said, uh, and this was years and years ago, that we now have the power to travel through interstellar space. So, you know, starship propulsion, there it is. It's being hidden. Um, So they're under constant surveillance, and the ops soldiers are waiting for Oli to make his move to give you your mission. They're waiting for that. It appears that Oli can remote view through Ilona and see what is going on, or Ivana, I'm sorry, and see what is going on, whether he is doing this or not. Now that's unbelievable. Like it, it's amazing to have that kind of life where you're being constantly watched. I give them a lot of credit. You know, that's pretty scary stuff. Yeah, it, it's just amazing, and uh, yeah, that that's that's just half of it, really. I, I have to go th- through here, and uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Now, there is uh, also some information from a super soldier. His name is James Rink. Now, I checked all these people out, and, and they are real people, They and they are who they say they are. Um, James had a very interesting question. He asked uh, Oli uh, what the botanical or common names are of the plants used in 
uh, dragon pills used to re-age the body to 21. That, that is, you know, that's bizarre. That's wild. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. James Rink talks about uh, that he has cloned cyborgs in Area 51. Um, let me see. I'm telling you, I have bruises on my forehead from banging my head on the desk trying to put this together. You know, you know what, uh, Michael? While you're doing that and gathering your notes, it's interesting that we heard news about this branch that they want to um, attach to the current branches, the Space Corps which is for potential hostile activities by our adversaries in space. Mm. And you mentioned about interstellar propulsion. Um, is, it, is this something that I, I think that we do need to have uh, such an agency? But could it be because they're worried about something else? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, exactly. You know, I, and why they would pick two sisters in the Czech Republic, you know, it, it's just very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Let's see. All right. Um, it, he talks. Let me see. It, mm, it's so difficult. Okay, okay. Um, Oli tells them that um, the, the answer to the botanical question is meaning in codes. Um, and he talks about exploring his identity and structure, talks about James Rink as being transparent, uh, in a, examining whether we are identical to the biological structure and whether we survive using plants, which we do. We eat plants. We are based on a biological unit, a humanoid. Our fluid, stru- our fluid structure, our body, which does not apply to plants from, from our world, your world, he says. Pl- all the plants have codes. Botany is derived from Latin, flora, botany. Plants say people. This doesn't make much sense. Each plant has its own code and healing energy. Well, that's which, true. Yeah, which passes on to the evolution of the plant empire. Uh, 21 number is a code. James manipulates with the structure of code and lab systems in botany. He is also investigating his identity and research. I do not know who the clone is. He is transparent to us. Uh, let's see. He doesn't, you know, he beats around the bush with this. I mean, you know, I'm trying to find out where he says experiments, clones, bio robotization in the area. It is, um, let's see, there's a big laboratory in the big expanse. This laboratory has the task of performing these experiments. Intervention to biology, which chemistry and all performed, all are performed on the basis of hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, all is mixed in the large test tube. I wish that was more clear. Uh, it, it must refer to a, a laboratory or, or something somewhere on a ship or, or something like that. Every part of some biological matter and tissue samples are clones. Similarly, uh, in the same area, there is cooperation with other entities. Uh, They tested in different directions with different entities. Mm. It sounds like they're reiterating about the lab and and creating clones from humans and maybe different life forms. Uh, maybe, maybe. And like I said, I, I'm covered with bruises. <laughs> I'm reading my head. Um, let's see. Now he talks about, uh, he does not apparently get to the answer uh, of what's in the what's in the uh, the pills that kind of bring us back to 21 years old. Wouldn't that be great? Um, oh, so this, this James Rich. James this, Rink. Uh, Rink. This guy, he took one of those pills? No, I think he was just interested in finding out oh, okay. about them and where he got them, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, he talks about the soul, and he says the soul is already extinct, and the original soul is elsewhere. 
Capturing the original soul is not possible. Cosmic law is under surveillance. None better space reserved for manipulating the soul and another clone is not a place in this system. Now, we say, you people say, quote unquote, reptilians uh, love to manipulate and we know that the transparent person James is in touch with is a few of the elite uh, of this origin from another sphere. This is this is direct from Oli. Uh, uh, reptilians are called otherwise. You people say reptilians. Mm-hmm. Reptilians have their souls and lost and burned after many lives. Reptilians are trying to f- transform mankind into something on their level. They have envy to them. And, uh, you know, they're envious of us because we have a soul where they do not. He also talks about reptilians not having emotions, but they can pretend, they can play the act well. We know that human entities are also, uh, there are also some human entities without emotion, but their souls are not dead or extinct. Um <sighs> Reptilians have their code in the emblem, uh, and they describe this emblem, a triangle with uh, 21 and a swastika in the middle, something like a swastika, not, not a, a Nazi swastika, but, you know, turned a little bit. Uh, 21 is their favorite number that allows them to enter various programs among the various worlds. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this situation here that happened to I- I- Ilona. She was younger. Um, yeah, this, was, uh, this is an example of one of her abductions. She said she woke up in the morning uh, and her mother said to her, what are those burnt holes in your nightgown? And she looked at her nightgown. There were many burned holes. Then about two hours later, Ivana, she has a room right next to her sister, woke up. And she also had burn holes through the nightgown. She remembers being paralyzed. And she could hear uh, a Morizovu alphabet. Whatever. It is weird that they both had burn holes in the back of their nightgowns. She still remembers that it seemed like a vivid dream and as she lay in a white room on a table in the shape of a hexagon and around her were five humanoids. She was lying on her back and could not move. Then she remembers that the neck on the back of her throat was red like two punctures. The punctures were far apart, about four centimeters, and it was there. The marks were there for about 10 years, and it took that long for those marks to disappear. Um, yeah, and unbelievable. Let me see. Now, here, here is a uh, – this is probably the last thing I'll do for tonight because, frankly, all this stuff is just amazing. Uh, all right. This is interesting, and and I have to get more information on this. But um, this is only talking about uh, our general world and atmosphere. He says we perceive your space as one large laboratory and a large computer. Now, God is the universe. Everything is done according to him. It is difficult for many people to understand this. Humanity is being explored, studied. The population was planted on the earth. Now, artificial population is unrecognizable from ordinary human beings. You only recognize them by their mimic and emotions, which is interesting. Otherwise, you will not be able to recognize them. The history... The history of the universe preserves certain traces of the majestic Qatari ceremony. I, now, I'm, I've never heard of this before. Katara is the doctrine of the gods 
who navigate space-time vacuum as well as operations in space-time. Um, he says that we should learn about things like Katara during our life. Instead, <laughs> he gets a little uh, wisecracking here. You spend your time on nonsense. You, <laughs> you people have, yeah, right. You people have what you call school on Earth. The real learning takes place in your soul. Instead, no one will re-educate your soul to another education system. Our school is simply called a space school, and we are its children, as you humans say. Katara is the star system. However, not all stars you see are real stars. It is not the way you think it is. In majority, they are just exploded lava space rocks which merged together and by so doing formed a fixed point in the universe it combines physical properties but they did not uh, teach you anything about that in school he challenges us there are more planets in existence than what we're aware of moreover there are more civilizations and dimensions he knows people would like to figure out the names of the planets directions they are located at, or how many years away they are orbiting. Now, they're talking about space-time flights, not light years or light jumps. Pardon me one sec. I've got to wet the throat a little. <clears throat> uh, dimensional. The time that we call time is, is not actually real. It is not continuous. However, consciousness is able to feel the connection as well as recognize the same goal. And I, I just uh, read something else this week in physics that uh, basically says that time and space are not actually real. That this is how we perceive, this is how we have to perceive reality. We have to perceive ourselves in a different in, in a in a space, a defined space, and we have to have the the trail of time so that we can place ourselves temporally along that space or in that space. Uh, let's see. That's pretty deep. It's like- very deep. Yeah, very deep. And you know, they I would I would probably like to sign up for the space school. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. <laughs> well, you know, that has something to do with the holographic universe. Oh, absolutely. Theory. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, that that's in and of itself an extremely interesting subject. Uh, let's see. Okay. The time, like I said, you call real time. It's not continuous. Consciousness is able to feel the connection as well as recognize the same goal. It is a signal similar to energy. The star system is within each of us. It is something that cannot be taught. It has to be awoken and develop on its own there are many codes of the star system in your fields with the the space around us um there and and he refers to as crop circles being one of the keys crop circles or codes and so is light language yep yep there's a pretty fair amount of them out there there are individuals who possess the knowledge of encoded energy basically One to five percent of the individuals on Earth can decipher it. The rest is pure speculation. For some reason, uh, we're heavily into percentages. Uh, We as human beings do not. Oh, we we as uh, aliens, as extraterrestrials, do not care about percentages. The way we perceive it is that a person is chosen, predestined to deliver this kind of message or mission along the timeline. Very interesting. You will be the disciple of the universe. Reptilians to say to you, we do not know the number. They live the shape of love. I think, boy, I'll tell you, I think that's enough. I have more. So they're uh, they're hmm. basically, I think the gist of it is they're creating these clones which don't have souls. Right. Uh, but they have captured souls, or the soul can't get into the clone. So it can only go into a natural form being. Um, 
And then the, you know, the reptilians don't have, and I heard this before, that they don't have an internal soul like ours. They live a lot longer than we do, but yes. I think they, so I, I don't know. I mean, but um, I'm assuming there's also different types of reptilians. Um, some are good, some are bad, just like right. everything else. But I think he's just saying the ones that are working with the government, I guess. Now, why would the government, why would the those people want to do that, create these beings that possibly could take us over? Like, why... Would they even want to do that unless they don't know the beat? My guess is the reptilians are telling them one thing, but it's really another thing. I like, I, I don't know. I, I think they're kind of downplaying the reptilians a little bit um, because they're kind of saying that we have we have the power to learn this stuff. And the reptilians somehow have lost their their quote unquote soul or life force, maybe, if you want to call it that. Um, and we can potentially, you know, go beyond them in terms of development. Well, that's part of what the ascension process is all about. Is when we the the codes, like when I meditate in the morning, it's it, I guess you know, a lot of the meditations right now to, uh, are about awakening your DNA codes. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about codes, light language, um, to make us aware of our star, you know, our star origins. People are waking up yeah. to the fact that they aren't weren't really born here, that their soul came from the stars, right? And they're here to learn for a mission. So I think, I mean, it was, it's colorful language, and, it, and it's, you know, but I I get that, you know, where he's really talking about mm -hmm. the ascension process. He's talking about we're all these crop circles and all there's codes all around us yeah, yeah. that are making us awake and aware of who we are and it's happening because so many people you know i i hear like within since 2012 tons and even just two years ago there's been tons and tons of people that just about everybody i talked to mm -hmm. the, they they started becoming awake and aware after 2012 Mm. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, well, well, this 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 will be the last thing I read tonight. I have okay. one thing here that I uh, <clears throat> I neglected to uh, remember here, but I just came across it. Um, Oli talks about the flood as being the purification of the earth. This is what your governments are working on, so that there is not much sunshine. In you to chemtrails. Mm -hmm. The reaction to rain and therefore floods far reaching throughout the earth. They're talking about climate change. Um, above it works and cooperates with different entities. It will be a different flood than the ones that you recall in history. This is a flood from another angle. Beware, your earth is already. Uh, in uh, another pole. I guess that means that the poles have shifted. Magnetism has changed and everything rotates differently. Destruction will not just be a flood. The new law will be written before this happens. On our earth, this is interesting. I, I, I don't know whether I buy it or not, but it's, he says, on our earth, on your earth, weather is artificial. The government and its resources are causing rain, the artificial climate, and they supply oxygens for our lungs. The map of the world will be submerged in the dark. The flood occurred in ancient times, so history is repeated, but it will not be the same. It will be in the dark. No individual will see the light, but it will still take a long time to get there by this time you will perceive the world map from an artificial angle from another part in the cosmic spectrum uh, i think maybe that refers to us moving on having ascended uh or something general like that yeah it, it it's well he's definitely talking about the chemtrails blocking the sun because the sun oh yeah is good for you. It gives you the codes Absolutely. you need. It actually is a, a tool for awakening. So when there are, 
doing the chemtrails, they're they're making those thin gray clouds or the whitish gray clouds mm-hmm. that are real thin. Yeah. They're blocking those essential ascension rays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this not is this not interesting how this is. information is coming together with your information? Interesting. It is. It, it's a little hard to I, I get where it's hard to interpret. Um, but but once you read the whole thing, I can yeah. kind of see into it. Okay, yeah. I'll finish. I'll finish up. Okay, okay so um, now the stars. When when this happens, the stars are now seen from your Earth at a different angle. Yes, you should be careful. We are still uh, not going to show up in the sky for the public. Not yet completely. Only for you, Ivana and Delona. When will our task? When when our task is set to show us, it cannot be. Uh, talked about and planned as people do when they plan something between themselves. There are certain limits uh, in space and the cosmos. Oli, I am wa- this is Oli talking. I am watching the people around you, Ivana and Ilona. We try to capture them as it happens on a computer. And I think they're talking about uh, these events that happen to them. They're, they're catching them. They're preventing them from hurting the two sisters. Uh, it is like a remote-controlled computer that penetrates into the lives of that particular soul. They have a very powerful source of navigation. The implants are nothing Uh, The implants are nothing to our computer. Implants work mainly for evil entities. So the girls have obviously have no implants, and they're working with Oli here. Uh, Individuals who have implants um, very possibly might be in touch with or, or, you know... uh, I don't know. It's too dark for me to speculate about. And Oli ends on that note. Uh, So, boy. Wow. And and there's still a lot of stuff I could talk about. But, you know, that's enough. That's enough. I can't do it anymore. (laughs) <laughs> it's a, it's really all encompassing. Well, it sounds dark, but the the ending. I guess the goal of Oli and his crew is to make sure none of the negative stuff happens. So we right. kind of send. So they're they're uh, they're making us aware. Now this is nothing new. We we knew the underground bases exist, and 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 we know there there's a lot of stuff going on, like in Dolce. Right. You know, with the experiments, with the so. Um, but I imagine they're going to at some point. This is going to be out in the open for everybody to know, and it's going to be stopped. So yeah. I imagine that's what they're trying to do. Most likely, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do have the name of the of the planet that uh, Oli is, is from. It is the planet Elilajil. Elilajil. So, Elilajil. Elilajil. Uh, interesting name. You know what's really interesting? I think it's pretty cool. You know, we have our planets named Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. It would be really awesome to have a codex that lists the names of the planets according to what, what what they perceive them as, you know, like the planet that I just mentioned, Elila Gilles, uh, it, you know, that could be anything. That could be uh, Alpha Centauri. It could be Jupiter. It could be anything. Uh, very interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, listen, it's quarter two. Uh, it, did you uh, did you want to Bill take a quick break or um, what I mean, would you like to do? If you guys want, we could take a break. This way, Julia can go on. Uh, right, on what right. She wants that sounds good. Yeah, All and right, then so- Julia will uh, will take the rest of the time to present her stuff, and we'll ask some questions of her and everything. Okay, so let's do it now. Take us out. All right, we are. Uh, you are listening to the Starborn Connection on KGRA Radio, the only place I'd go for information about UFOs and the paranormal. Your contact to the multiverse. See you on the other side. Worry.
worry a lot. If you're forgetful, nervous, moody, or overwhelmed, chances are you're not protecting yourself from the ravaging effects of stress and anxiety. No matter the cause, ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, your quality of life, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in as little as one to two weeks and increase your ability to recall facts, names, and numbers in four to 12 weeks. Calm and Clever was created by scientist Kurt Hendricks, a principal investigator in two NIH-funded studies on Alzheimer's disease. Try Calm and Clever for two months. You'll feel the difference. Call 1-800-758-8746 or go to calmandclever.com. Our world is a world of mysteries. Strange disappearances, unusual happenings, mysterious phenomena. And this November, you can learn about the greatest mysteries of our time by joining us on the Mysteries Cruise. Enjoy several days at sea and attend exclusive private lectures with leading personalities like researcher Rosemary Ellen Guiley, author of more than 49 books, including The Gin Connection, podcaster Jim Harold, host of The Paranormal Podcast, and writer and researcher Micah Hanks of The Graylian Report. Set sail this November 8th through the 17th, 2017, aboard the Crown Princess and sail with us into the heart of mystery. Make your reservations before time runs out by visiting HolidayMakerTravel.com today or reserve by phone at 877-642-4308. That number again is 877-642-4308. The mysteries of our time await you. Visit MysteriesCruise.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences. Autograph books and DVDs. Chances to win all-inclusive conference cruises and private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. Mainstream media's most wanted. KGRARadio.com Okay, hey, welcome back uh, to the second part of our show. Like I said, we're just going to go 90 minutes this week because we're just disseminating information, as Oli likes to say. Uh, so I'm going to now turn it over to Julia, who has some important information uh, relating to Ascension and her experience. Julia, it's all yours. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you guys. Um, I kind of do everything spur of the moment, and I wait for spirit to tell me, you know, what I'm supposed to talk about. Um, and, of course, you know, if I look at news and stuff during the week that I think is relevant. Um I had an experience like two hours ago, so <laughs> talk about spirit at the last minute, right? So, as everybody knows, um, since uh, we had John Bertelli on, who's the light language person, um, he, he really activated me. He, he activated so many people, and, um, and of course, recently I went to the ranch, and I saw him for a whole light language weekend. So, everything's all tied together. <clears throat> so, since last year, I've been meditating for about two years now for my gifts to manifest. And so, I could be of service to others. And I never thought I would be speaking light language. I mean, I never thought that. I thought, you know, maybe I'll do some healing with my hands. Like, I, I don't really know. And... I really, at this point, so many gifts are rapidly coming out, 
And we had another person on the show, Debbie Solaris, who I had a reading with. And she told me, you're going to get activated at East SETI. And I'm like, well, of course, you know, East SETI, how can you not? <laughs> yeah, really. But mm. you have no idea. <laughs> I mean, when I think about gifts, sometimes it's something you never would expect. And um, my before I go into what actually happened, I, I want to say for every single person that's listening, to really um, – Really, if you really want your gifts to manifest, just ask in meditation. Ask your guides who they are. Ask them to come in dream time so you can know their names. I had Michael and Gabriel, the archangels, come to me in dream time. So they're my main guys, but I, I'm sure I have many others. So, um, you know, it, it's it will happen. I mean, if you really... If your heart's really open and you really want to be of service, and I'm in the second half of my life. I'm in my mid-50s, and, and this journey was just in the past. I was always into UFOs, so what? UFOs, yeah, you know, but how's that going to change the world? What's changing the world is when your gifts start to manifest and you use them, and they change people's lives, and they become awake and aware, and then it's like a web. While their friends start getting affected by their change, and then that brings on ascension. So I really encourage everybody, if you if you don't meditate, to really, really start. And it could be a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Um, and ask your guides. I'm, I'm a verbal person, as you know. I mean, I'm a radio co-host. So I my prayers are basically out loud. Um, I do do silent meditations, but for me... Verbal works for me, verbal manifestations. And um, what's amazing is so many things are coming to pass. And when they do come to pass, you kind of sit there and go, how did that happen? <laughs> and, you know, you yeah, just, right. It's totally overwhelmed. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, when, when things really start to happen, it's it's like, oh, and, and Archangel Michael's like, well, you asked us to open up your gifts and I'm, I'm doing this meditation every day that releases the codes from your DNA and, and you get codes from the universe. And I think it actually worked today. So let me just give you um, words just to let you know words will not be sufficient to what just happened tonight. Uh, um, what uh, My husband and I join every year we go to – we have a country club membership for the summer. It's a lot cheaper, very inexpensive to just join for the pool. The golf membership is really expensive. So we just join for the pool because I really love the pool. And my friends and I go a lot. So just to forward, um, a few days ago, one of my girlfriends came to the pool two, – two of my girlfriends came to the pool – and uh, these are girls that I go out to lunch with, I go out to dinner with. It's, it's kind of like we're very close. They're good friends. But all the spiritual stuff was not like part of the conversation for many, many years. I started bringing it up and they really accepted it, which was really unusual. So one of my girlfriends for two years was really sick. She had um, – she would – very really adventure outside her house all of a sudden um connect the dots i go to see john at east city i come back i get a phone call oh this person is out of her house and she's actually um enjoying her life and doing things i'm like what and, you know i couldn't believe it so i said well we'll have her come to the country club so we came to the country club, and the t my two girlfriends were asking me to speak light language to them. So the one that was sick, she didn't hear it. The other one heard it, but she didn't hear it. So I held her hand, and I spoke it to her. Uh, whenever I speak light language, for some reason, people cry. <laughs> That's hmm. how you know it's working. They have That's no idea. That's interesting, yeah. They have no idea what it is. So... It really touched her. She, they both got chills. I tried to explain, and I, I, it dawned on me, but I didn't. It's not that I'm egotistical, or I, I don't want to be egotistical, 
but my first thought was, oh my God, um, it's a. Th- I'm not actually praying for her, but Prime Creator, like we had Susie Byler uh, recently, and Susie was talking. I, I, I talk every week with the group calls from the Creation Temple for Susie Byler, and Prime Creator does um, speak. And one of the guidances I got, because I was praying for everybody, he's like, don't pray for everybody. You need to heal yourself, and your vibration will change everybody around you, which I definitely see that. So I really felt that when this person got healed, it was right around the time I was activated at East SETI. And not only that, my father-in-law, who could barely walk, um, all of a sudden was playing tennis, but not like a – he was just hit, hitting balls. He wasn't running around. But we never thought that would ever happen again. So there were a few people that just really seemed to change around me that I never thought changed. So I definitely see the connection there. Now, what happened today, I had my phone call with Susie today, our Creation Temple call, which was amazing. And um, I was really on a high. And I was debating, it was already 3 o'clock, and I was debating whether or not to go to the country club. And uh, so it was really sunny. So we weren't sure what we were going to do. But by 3.30, we decided to go to the club my husband and I. So we went to the club and it was wonderful. We were in the water and we got hungry and it was about five o'clock. We decided to have food at the, they have a little, little um, sports bar in the bottom and there's open seating. So, so we went and um, we started talking, there were all these couple people there and they were very friendly and we were talking and I knew the I knew the husband I didn't know the wife it was actually the president of the country club and the funny thing was my husband was wearing uh, he wasn't wearing a polo shirt he was wearing a t-shirt with writing on it which is a big no-no at the country club and the funny thing was when I spoke to I said something to the guy the president he said usually we send you a letter in this case We won't send you a letter. You know, the next time he comes, he has to wear a polo shirt. And I said, we absolutely know that. (laughs) You know, so like he could have told us, you can't sit here. You have to go because you're not properly dressed. So there's a lot of things that I see, the timing of everything. And the so all of a sudden we're talking about um, stocks and bonds, believe it or not. We're talking about, um, you know, your typical country club conversation. And we're not rich people, but we're enjoying <laughs> – we're getting some tips. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're talking about that, and I have no idea. You, I can't even tell you how the conversation got started with me and his wife. I, I can't even – so we're talking, and I, I honestly – don't know how it happened, but the next thing I know, I'm sitting next. We're in two different tables. Next thing I know, I'm sitting right next to her. I'm holding her hand, and I'm speaking light language. Now, I can't even explain how that happened. All I can tell you is um, she was telling – oh, I think it was – she was looking at my diamond ring. I have a huge diamond ring that I got from my mother when she passed. And it was my grandmother. So that's how I think I got onto their table. She wanted to see my ring. And, um, you know, so we were talking about the jewelry and we were talking about my mother that my mother had just passed. So she said her mother passed in a terrible car accident. And my heart just like all of a sudden, all the codes just started. I can't even explain it. And I'm like, um, you know, um, and she goes, when my mother died, she died um, angry at me. And I have just this horrible grief, you know, when your mother dies angry and it was really mm. stupid. And I held her hand and I started speaking light language. And I, I didn't physically see her mother, but I felt that, you know how like some psychics tell you, inside their head they see it like a movie like i saw her mother behind her walking back and forth and putting her hands on her and i started getting a feeling so she never heard light language before so i started to 
explain to her this is star language and the pres her husband the president's right next to me with a few other golf guys and here i am right speaking like language holding this woman's hand and archangel michael comes through she didn't even know who archangel michael was these are catholic people they didn't know who archangel michael was i said archangel michael's talking to me now <laughs> oh who's that Oh, he's one of the big angels. <laughs> you know, like I'm trying to explain to her what I'm doing, and but she didn't look freaked out. She looked like I just want this to happen. So I'm speaking the light language and I'm telling her her mom's behind her, and I said, Your mom is always with you. She hasn't left you. And she knows um she's not angry at you anymore. She understands the situation, how silly it was. And she said she's um, she had to leave. I I, I kind of started to tell her about contracts, like before you're. I mean, this stuff's just coming to me. It's you know um, because how do you? She's sitting there crying. I mean, how do you deal with that? It was just mm. like I felt Archangel Michael just speaking through me or whatever knowledge I needed to give her about her mother. You know, we make these contracts before we pass away or, you know, we make these contracts before we come to earth. We we, we are reincarnated and your mother made this contract with you and you didn't realize how painful it would be at the time. So, um, and, you know, so there were more things, but they're personal, you know, so. And then she said something else, which really, who? And the funny thing was, really? wow. um, she talked about a child. She, uh, she had a child that lived for six hours and passed. And, and what do I see? And I, I honestly had to tell her, I don't see anything because I believe he's in another life. But mm. I know that before he went into that other life, he was around you on top looking down. And I said, I'm not giving you this information because that's what I feel. I'm giving you this information because that's what was told to me by other people uh, when children die. You know, this is just my knowledge. The thing with your mother, I felt. The reason why I felt the mother thing was because I lost my mother. There was a connection. And the funny thing was my husband lost his mother two years ago, and I just saw his mother behind him in my vision. Wow. Just laughing and and just, like, being so excited that everything was connecting. So so I'm talking to her about that, and she's asking me about other friends that lost. And I said – I had to tell her, I can't see anything. I said, this is for you. This was just for you. There, there, there is a reason why I sat here. My husband's improperly dressed. We weren't kicked out. And your husband's sitting right here, the president, who made these rules. Um, and um, the timing and the fact that I lost my mother, I, I think that was the connection. A- anyway, she went on and on and on and on with tears in her eyes that she kept telling me there was more to the story but i mean this is the best way i can speak it right now uh because a lot of spirit a lot of stuff i said to her i don't remember because it was downloads so um she kept saying i have this incredible gift that over and over again she goes you don't know what you did for me i was suffering so much from this grief wow and, and and it's gone. She said, she, I mean, and tears really prove that when you really cry. She said, I had such guilt and such misery because my mother died angry at me. And, and now I know that it's, so, you know, she understands. And, and you have such an incredible gift. You don't know what you did for me. This was over and over and over and over again. And you're sitting there. I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, what just happened? What just happened? It's like, and I said to her, I don't know if I could do this again for anyone else. I think it was just for you at this. And I said, it had to be a stranger. It couldn't be a friend because if it was a friend. You wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. So, God. Um, that was amazing, so though. Be, what? That was amazing. I mean. Yeah. And, so it had and, to be, um, you know. 
and I get a lot of this with a lot of all the healings that I've done are mostly spontaneous with friends that unexpectedly drop by or people that I wouldn't even expect would even know what light language is or and, and all of a sudden they ask me like so what's going on with your spiritual life and I'll tell them oh speak you know speak to me hmm. and these some of these guys are like Republican people that are just really like you know status quo <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I see a question here um, could you uh, okay to ex- to explain light language okay well we've had a few shows on it so yeah. most of you have no idea light language is star language um, it comes it's many different dialects many different languages from the Pallades Lyra, Sir- Sirius, all the different star clusters, uh, there's different dialects. It basically is a code. So when you speak light language, it raises vibration. So when I, let's say I could be really, really depressed or, you know, I just start s- speaking light language, it gets me right out of it. When I do my meditations every morning, I'll, I'll start speaking light language, and it just lifts me way, way up, and um, it, it, I'm definitely activated. Now, whether or not this will happen again, I don't know. Um, it really is a wonderful feeling to make someone feel good, but it's not an egotistical thing. I'm, I'm like dealing with it like, oh my God, what, what just happened? So uh, if you want me to, to speak now, everybody has a different dialect. So I'll just briefly, really fast, um, do my dialect, which some of my psychic friends, when they, they hear me, they think it's um, uh, Lyran, which is the feline, uh, lion, lion people. Uh, she sees them around me. And I love cats, so <laughs> I must have a connection. And my star sis, my star seed is Sirius with a lot of Palladian. So I'm a mix. I'm a mutt. I'm a mix of everything. So here goes. Hola, sonda la shiro, sonda la kia la mana la koa, onda la shiro, sonda la kia la mana la koa, onda la kaya la mana la koa. Under a seal of shonda la kia, honda la kaya la mana la koa, inda la shiro, sonda la kia la mana la kia. Oh, I just, I just got so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing now, but um, I'm just really happy right now because it, and I have to, you have to understand, I move my hands as well. I think it's John Astanis, the one that asked the question, and Lorraine. Yes, um, I move my hands up. When I speak, because I'm trying to lift humanity and I'm trying to get everybody to the point where they ascend. <clears throat> so I do the hand movements. Some people don't. Some people do light language in, in writing. They do codes. Um, it's all over Facebook. Uh, we have a page. It's Unity Light Language Activation. And it's all the people that speak light language and some people that don't, that just relate to it. Um, you might want to check that out. And um, I think on We Speak on YouTube, which is John, uh, the, the guy that originally activated all of us. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. So I, I'm just encouraging everyone in your meditations, if you want your gifts to manifest, speak them. Absolutely speak them. Um, so, um, you know, every day I'm asking for my gifts to manifest, and I'm asking for specific gifts, specific gifts of, and, and it, it is light language healing that I'm asking for, so I got it. But I never thought it would be like a grief thing. And if people don't understand, I mean, everybody's lost somebody, but guilt and grief together is horrendous, and, and um the timing of the situation was uncanny because I wasn't even going to go to this club and just the timing of being at the same spot that they were there and just getting into conversation. I mean, we started talking about stocks and bonds 
and she's telling me to invest in Tova. The uh, I'm giving you a hint. The uh, the pharmaceutical company. You know all the bad things. See, that's what we need to invest in, right? So, um, you know, and then you know she looks at my jewelry, something trivial, like you know, well, I love your ring. It's beautiful. Um, oh, it was my mom. So you get into this trivial conversation, and all of a sudden, I don't know how it happened, but she started expressing her grief about her mother, and I just saw her mother behind her. And it was like not a, actually seeing her, but it was like the inner inner pituitary gland kind of thing. And, you know, I got the download from my, I asked Michael at that moment to download me with any information and I just started talking and I've never done it before. And I don't know if it'll happen again. I, I hope it does to help other people, but I, you know, when she started bringing all her friends, like, can you talk to this person? I said, no, because this is for you, you know, this is a miracle for you. And she hugged and kissed me and wanted to see me again. And I said, I'm here, you know, almost every day in the summer, you know, at the pool. And, oh, and here's the really interesting thing or the neat thing. She, I, I can't tell you what she does for a job. I don't want to give too much information out. But she prays for her clients all the time. Every morning she prays for her clients She's in, or She's in the health health field, or uh, patients. She's in the health field, and um, she tells me every morning she, she she has their files, and she's always praying. And I said, well, Archangel Michael just told me the reason why I'm here today and I'm helping you through your grief is because you pray for all these other people. And that's why this healing is just for you and not all these other people you want to bring into it. it. It's just you. It's your blessing because you every day cared about all these other people. So you see the connection? It's Isn't that amazing? It's pretty, yeah, it really is amazing. And, and I, I think that Angel Michael or, you know, she just thought she was praying just to God. And I said, well, they're messengers, so they give him the message. <laughs> so... You know, when you, you don't realize, people in general don't realize the power of prayer. And when you pray for somebody else and when your heart's in it, you know, especially when your heart's in it. Because, you know, I used to pr- ask for my gifts and not, my heart wasn't really into it. It's just I thought that's what I was supposed to do. But then when my heart really got into it, that's when the gifts started to manifest. Um that sounds like that's the empathic part of you connecting so that you can make, you know, uh, you, you can do what you did for them. You, you really have to kind of know through empathy, you know, what you need to say. Yeah, yeah. And, and Michael will speak to me, you know. Um, I think it's him because he's my, my main guide. And that's the energy I feel. Um but it, it's – so I think everybody everybody can speak light language. It's, it's, it's in every single person. I just remembered it. John just remembered it. Um, you can remember – that's part of awakening. Um, when the human race awakens, they remember that they weren't born here forever. They were born in the stars. They came to Earth for a mission. You remember your past lives. I don't remember my past lives per se. I did have Eddie Seti two things that I started to remember. But um, in general, I, I, Debbie, I went to a few very good friends that were psychics that brought up some past lives, which made so much sense to what I'm going through now that they didn't know about. So, like, I put it, you know, I kind of feel that's pretty cool, um, you know, that they were saying the right thing. But the mm-hmm. light language, and I couldn't speak it for a while, but I was activated at a call. Uh, they were doing a meditation, and everybody got activated. And my, my dialect was a little different. It wasn't the same as the one I speak now. And it's not fluent. I don't speak fluent light language. John does. He speaks fluent, a couple different fluent Palladian languages. Well, that, that sounded like you, you weren't stumbling over any words there. You sounded pretty... It comes. It's it's yeah. It's it, it, it's codes coming from the center of my heart, and it's it's a part of me. 
Um, all I can say is other people have used light language. Um, when we're, we do uh, also, <laughs> I'm constantly on Skype. Uh, we do uh, group calls from um, all over the world. People, spe- we have a big crew in Australia, mm-hmm. pretty far, and um, there's a whole crew there that speak light language. And some of them had some negative experiences with bad entities, and they they'll speak light language. They're gone. I'm really really lucky, um, and I'm fine with. I don't see see these guys. I don't. Uh, I'm pretty clear, and I do a lot of clearing prayers and protection prayers. So you know, I'm pretty cool. But, um, but I was just thinking, you know, I'm going to heal people with the light language. Like they'll come over, I'll put my hand on the part that that's hurting or wrong, and I'll, I'll heal them. And um, I never thought anything about grief counseling or grief. Um, and I certainly would never go on TV and be, you know, like that. I mean, I don't think – I don't like that. I'm sorry. I don't like these people that are on TV and, and it's all show business. I don't like that. Um, this is just something that comes and go. My gifts come and go when they need to come and go. And um, so this is just something that I wanted to share with everybody because, you know, I think everybody can – through meditation and prayer, ask for gifts to manifest. And your gift may be something totally different. Mm, Maybe right. you're a great artist. And when people look at <clears> you, <throat> they get enlightened and it makes them search. And everybody has different gifts. Healing is a great gift. And we all, and I think we all do possess that gift. Another one might be telepathy. Um, I have friends that have telepathy. They can read other people's minds, but they don't do it like to get information. They'll have a conversation with someone else who's telepathic and they'll talk to each other. <laughs> and I, I want that. I think that's amazing. Um, what's great about telepathy is you don't need a translator. <laughs> you yeah. Know, that's, yeah. That's why ETs, our, our space brothers, speak a lot of times with telepathy because it's the only way you're going to understand them Um, because the concepts, they give you concepts. It's not words, it's concepts. Um, So that was what I wanted to talk about that actually happened to me. Uh, What I was originally planning to talk about um, is in our UFO movement, we've been, especially on Facebook, you know, we talk about it every week, but there's all this negative stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, always. Well, we've got God. the Corey Good thing with the David List and dark journalists. We got the thing with uh, Larry Warren and, and Peter Wobbins and, oh, there's a few others. I have gotten to the point where I just don't even read them anymore. I go yeah. right past it because – it creates division among the community. Right, right. There's a lot of whistleblowers. Um, I believe them 50-50. I, I finally came to the conclusion with all whistleblowers on 50-50, I don't know. Um, maybe they're telling some truth. Maybe they're not. The point is, the point is, why, why attack a person so much I mean, especially I'm talking about here we are radio co-hosts, right? We're, yeah. We have a radio show. My point of view is everybody should get, you know, there's certain people we might not have on the show that are really controversial. But well, yeah, yeah. I think we can I think we can draw a line. We know both of us know where yeah, that line is. But, you know, we get, we're not going to I have my personal opinions, but I would never, ever tear apart anyone in the community. Um, Corey Good is being torn apart, and it has nothing to do with he's telling the truth or not. There's a million whistleblowers. Why him? Um, and why David? You know, all of a sudden, David Wilcock doesn't mean they're telling the truth, or I believe them 100% of the time. Why them and not the other person? You know what I'm saying? It's it, it seems to be certain people, and each one is accusing the other of having quote. The demonic connection, isn't you know, it? Isn't it catty though? I mean, I, I think 
think it's so ridiculous when yeah. you get to that point where you're back and forth. Um, and personally, I think it's all bull crap on both. You know, as far as the demonic yeah, stuff, it's you know, it's crap. yeah, it, it's, it's it like is. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, I, I can't think of anything to to call you on, so I'm going to pull the, the the demon worship card or the devil worship card. And so, anyway, this is going on. So now we have an, another thing. You know, not to you know, I have nothing against Corey Good, nothing uh, nothing against David Wilcock, and nothing personally against David List. Um, however, I feel that what's going on is wrong. Um, it, it's taking, uh, it's taking the material and blowing it out of proportion and it's, it's ruining, um, so he makes money off of it. So what? Well, um, this is, this is the thing, Julia. It, it, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, you walk into a room and someone's wearing um, red pants and everybody else has blue pants on. And you walk up to them and you just start ostracizing them. How dare you wear red pants, blah, blah, yeah, it, all this it, kind of stuff. And, and this is what happens out there. Instead of, you know, instead of going to the person and saying, hey, listen, this sounds pretty incredible. Can you back it up? And, you know, be, you have to be gentlemanly about it. You have to be, you know, well, I, I, easy. I, yeah, I mean, I've listened to videos where they, they they would have somebody and say, well, I'm not sure about this person. But they don't tear them apart to the point, you know, like his manager is a devil worshiper and uh, you know, the right. Canadian has the devil. Look, bull crap. That's my call on it. And, and my call is to leave the guy alone. Um, it's okay to bring certain things. Okay, he had that first interview with Bill Ryan. Leave it at that. <clears throat> um, it's just, oh, the other one is um, there's, there's stuff, you know, I guess Stephen Greer, people have a lot of problems with him. Um, so I don't know. It's like all these people, and I'm not saying – like it, it's important to bring subject up. It's important to talk about these things. But when you start tearing somebody apart, um, and all these other things come into it, it's like. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, th there's another person or two people. Uh, uh, one of them, I think, was on Daniel List, the dark journalist. Uh, he he posted it. Um, it's it's a I forget her name and I'm not even going to mention it if I knew it. It's a light worker who you know she went through the whole new age movement. She she had something negative to say about Corey Good, um, but she was talking about the ascension process, how that's that whole thing is wrong, or <coughs> excuse me, it's an it's a it's an illusion, um, it's misguided. Now, the one thing I can say about Corey Good, he does talk about the ascension process. Um, I'm down with that. But um, the um, there is another woman that I'm Facebook friends with. I'm not mentioning her name. Um, <clears throat> she has she's a light worker as well. These are both people I think that do healings. She's also coming out against ascension. So now I'm faced with coming out against workers. against it. Yeah, two okay. light workers that are think the whole thing's mm. the hooey, and she, so I'm like, so what's the point in getting up in the morning? Um, so they go on and on about how ascension is false and the whole new age thing is 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 a demonic disguise, and I'm really surprised, <clears throat> and that we have to heal the inner child, which we do, we absolutely do. Now, here's my take on that. Of course. Of course, there's going to be people that disagree with everything, every subject. So, now, here's me. <laughs> Do I – she writes a whole thing about the ascension process on, on this, you know, how, how wrong it is. Part of me wanted to write back. And what I wanted to write back was, but you're already ascended if you're um, – if you heal your inner child or you're going through that process, 
you are in the ascension process. It is one and the same. That's really what I wanted to say to her. But the what I really was getting was do not engage. Do not engage in the battle because that's exactly what it would be. And then you have 50 people going on the right. Am I right? 50 people I think you are. back and forth, back and forth. No. Absolutely. I, I, I won't be part of that trauma. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, so a lot of people might notice that I really don't engage in that anymore. And I don't post. I'm very I'm very careful about my posts now. Um, oh, yeah. I, I think I posted about my son going to University of Pennsylvania Law School, Jewish mother brag on the radio. Um, that's what I <laughs> yeah. posted. And I posted my big zucchini. So, you're in, yeah, you're, I saw that. That's a beautiful vegetable. <laughs> zucchini. Man. So, so anyway, that um, you're going to hear a lot of pro. I just want the audience to know you're going to hear a lot of pro and con about every subject. Meditate on your own. Take what resonates with you and throw the rest away. There are people that I really, I hear two or three sentences, I resonate with that. And then they start continuing to talk and, oh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not feeling that. Um, And then I turn them off. So just take what resonates with you. Uh, The important thing is that you're ascending, that you're moving forward, that you're changing your life, you're meditating, you're transforming your negative feelings um, to love and light. And and my life has drastically changed 200% my life has – 300% it's changed in the past few years because I was working on transforming my negative feelings, jealousy – uh, grief, all, all these different anger. Um, I worked on the violet flame transformation thanks to Susie and John um, who helped me with all these gifts. And that's how I ascended. I'm already in fifth dimensional consciousness. Yes, ascension is really happening. I see the effects of it all the time. Uh, I see different stories on the news, which, you know, when I, you know, I'll bring more to your attention. Uh, It looks crazy right now, and it really is. Um, But you need the crazy. You you need all this craziness. You need all this craziness to, like, um, for the good stuff to come out. You need people to get angry, and then they're going to want to change. So that's when your government and your health care and all that stuff changes. But ascension is happening. So every morning... If you really want a beautiful world with heaven on earth, do your meditations, change yourself. Because once you change, it's it's happening. Yeah. So that's it, folks. Thank you so much for <clears throat> listening to my blah, 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 blah. Well, one thing, one thing I want to add, uh, yeah. which will kind of like, uh, I think, put a cap on it. You, you have to remember that, that – uh, Bad things are going to eventually show themselves. If somebody is, you know, passing on bad information or, you know, trying to make something out of uh, something else, which is untrue, it will be found out eventually. And we don't need to cause big ruckus and yell and point fingers because, uh, you know, the cream always floats to the top and, and the bad stuff yeah, and I, I was really told from Prime Creator through a channeling to let it go, to let yeah. all the stuff go, not oh, to yeah, yeah. with the drama. It, it is show itself. Uh, the ones that are fake, it will show. Um, but to not destroy the human being. These are human beings. Right. They are, honestly, I believe that most of them believe what they're saying. Well, also so as a psych- as a bad. As a psychologist, people have reasons why they do things, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, someone might need attention. Someone might think that they want to get further on. So they make this stuff up or they, they twist this, uh, you know, fact one way or the other. Uh, you know, y- you have to use your empathic sense, really. 50-50. That, that's my sense. It's like some of the things I resonate with and some I don't. And, and some I'm like, you can't prove it. It sounds interesting. It sounds real interesting, but you can't prove it. So I'm like 50-50 on that. Yeah. You know, but as far as, you know, the ascension process, 
I the change happened in my life, so I know it's real. Yeah. But. But every, and I don't go online. I don't go on my Facebook. And I used to write little snippets about Ascension, and I'm like, I was told I, it's not about proselytizing, getting my my point of view out there. It's not right. about that. Every single person will come to his own understanding or hers sure. Sure. when they're ready. You can't That's tell right. people anything. That's they right. have to come when they're ready, and that was my guidance. So I don't really bother. Um, you know, I post about the radio show or something funky that happens, you know, in town, but I'm not really going to, or you know, if a news story happens, I'll go, eh, look at this. It's the ascension is happening. Huh, it's yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to say, oh, Joe needs to meditate so he ascends. I'm just telling you, if you want to meditate and you want your gifts and you want change, do it. It works. But if you're not ready for it, then fine. That's beautiful. You're in another, you know, you have different things that you need to do. So yeah, absolutely. that's the deal, folks. Well, listen, guys, it's been a pleasure tonight. We're going to sign off now. As I said earlier, we're going to have a 90-minute show. Next week, you'll see us for two hours or hear us for two hours. Um, and it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great show with Jane Donovan. You're going to learn so much from this lady. Um Julia, Bill, thank you for all your hard work. We'll see you next Saturday night, same time, and always same station, KGRA Radio, Alternative Talk, your connection to the multiverse. God bless. Have a good night, folks. Good night.